So welcome to this webinar, live webinar on strategies to make Soros blush, and I'll explain why in a second, uh, and the rest of us money. Uh, uh, and I picked a very good time for it. You'll have seen that the European Central Bank has uh, cut interest rates today. We've got a, a bit of a housing boom. I'm going to say boom if you're on the housing ladder. I'm going to say bubble if you're not. Uh, so let's kick off. See, first of all, in the first part of this, uh, what's going to happen with the rest of the markets? I'm going to give you some of the best insights we've got out of uh, wealth management sources like Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan and the like, uh, what, the sh what the clever money is doing. I want to get that across to you. That's first and foremost. That's the first part of this. And then I'm going to give you some specific strategies that we've been using in our own trading, which has helped us make money. Uh, I'm going to show you the brokers we've been using and uh, uh, how we've been and other traders have been taking money off them. Uh, which is always a nice thing to do, isn't it, when you're making money out of the brokers. Uh, so I'm going to tell you that uh, as well. So let's let's kick off. Uh, uh, please do grab a pen and paper as well while you're at it uh, as well. Look, first things first, for all those people asking whether this rally is going to last, you know, we're uh, uh, doing so incredibly well. Well, it is. And the reason for this is this. The S&P 500 earnings have been beating expectations. So the major U.S. markets... Uh, whether you look at the S&P 500 or the Dow, their earnings from companies which are uh, which are announcing earnings or announcing their profits are exceeding expectations. When they exceed expectations, uh, the market expectations, uh, then you can expect the market to rally. In other words, the average earnings surprise, in other words, the level by which they are outperforming the market is up to about 6% or more. And this has been going on for a number of quarters. Normally what happens is you get surprised by earnings, let's say from Apple or Google or whoever, a couple of times, and then you raise your expectations. And next time you're not so surprised. But actually what we can see here is that uh, this is ongoing. As soon as that happens and we get surprised, and we think, wow, Google have earned more than we thought they would. Yahoo are earning more than we thought they would. We buy into the stock, it pushes up the share price, pushes up the index, and then the British indices follow, the rest of the world takes the hint from that and says, wow, the Americans are going higher, yeah, it's time to be into equities. That's why we're at all-time highs over there. But it's not just over there. Look at this next slide. Global stock indices have risen to a record. If you want to see which ones have been doing the best, well, obviously some which you're not going to invest in tomorrow morning, Slovenia, for instance, or Portugal. Uh, poor old Greeks still suffering. Uh, well, at least they've got sun and sand. Uh, but um, the rest of the world has been doing rather well. If you look at the MISCI World Index at the bottom, which basically represents the, the, the rest of the world, so the MISCI World Index, you can see, uh, that is at an all-time high. Now, up until recently, we've not been feeling like we're going to hit all-time highs in the global markets. So the first question is, is this going to continue? Because right now, the one thing that is for sure is that there is a massive global equity rally going on, which you didn't probably even realize. Uh, so the first question, as I say, is will it continue? Well, the answer is uh, yes in the short term. We're very bullish to the end of the year. Uh, but for next year, we're cautious. Why are we cautious? Uh, look at this slide and you'll see why. What you're all uh, uh, seeing on screen now is the GDP percentage change on a year earlier for the U.S. markets. You can see there's a bit of a dip. Uh, growth has contracted a bit, but the euro area is still bounding ahead. Euro area economies are still growing. Growing not as fast as the Americans. Fine. I grant you that. But they are still growing ahead. And that's a positive thing for sure. And because they're growing, because they're, they're going up uh, so much, uh, uh, you're going to get uh, a bit of a, a, a bounce on European equities in any event, in any event, uh, uh, and you're going to get, you're going to get uh, uh, the American sort of, no, I wouldn't say downturn, but any negativity out of there uh, uh, will be balanced by the positive news out of Europe, and that's why we're positive uh, on the European side in any event, as I mentioned. Well. Uh, if you want to look at how this is translating into the UK, uh, what you can see on screen is UK consumer sentiment highest since June 2007. In other words, highest consumer sentiment 
since the recession, since uh, the credit crunch, since we all got into that big hole. In other words, are we out of the worst of it? Well, in some regards, we are. We are. And this is why we remain bullish. Uh, and this is going to feed into our trading strategies in a second, by the way, uh, and how we trade and what we trade in just one second. But this is why we're confident, at least until the end of the year, that the market, uh, uh, we want to be taking the long side of. Uh, and then obviously next year, we're going to have some worries, but we'll come to next year when, uh, when you know, let's give it a few few months before we start talking or worrying about next year. The reason we will be worried about next year is this picture. Okay, UK household debt is larger than Greece's. A uh, little bit of a complicated spider chart there, but what it shows is UK household debt uh, uh, is worse than that of Greece, worse than that of Germany, uh, worse than that of Italy, worse than that of France. So we do have a lot of consumer confidence, but we have a lot of debt in Britain. That's going to hurt us. It's going to hurt us later. It's not going to hurt us right now, but it is going to hurt us, and it's going to hurt us in due course. Uh, uh, like I said, should I worry about it right now? No, I don't need to worry about it right now, uh, but we will come to it uh, for next year. Uh, what we need, now need to consider for now is, okay, where's the money being made? What are the strategies? If you believe, as we do, that this rally will continue for now because of earnings uh, and because of consumer confidence. So let's have a look at some of the charts out there. Okay, look at that. That's the FTSE 100. Uh, there is potential danger because for those who use technical indicators, and if you don't, don't worry, I'll explain it to you. The MACD has uh, peaked and is overbought. Looks like it might fall. You can see how the FTSE 100 has just been on a rise for the last two years. I mean, it's just going up and up and up, and the upward trend is quite clear. But that's all well and good if your perspective is months ahead. For a lot of us, and I'm going to get to the day trading strategies, the kind of Soros-type strategies that we implement, where we're trading on one-minute and uh, five-minute charts. I'll get to that in just one second when you're looking at the short term and the strategies to adopt. But I want to give you this background context first. Still expect the FTSE to rise, but be warned. For the first time since this rally, it is so overbought and looks as if it may start dropping based on the technical indicators. So we have been warned to be prepared. Uh, one of the things I'm going to talk to you about and why we've called this strategies to make Soros blush is George Soros doesn't usually make 34% per annum. So we're going to give you the names of stocks which have allowed me over the last 10 years to do those kinds of returns. Okay, These are my stocks which were for 2013, uh, for the full year of 2013. Uh, that prov that I provided in January 2013 to ShareScope, and the returns were monitored by them, independently verified, and those are the results, 34% return. That outperforms uh, a Soros. I'll give you some strategies in a second and some stock names for 2014. 2014. How well have these strategies, and I say blush, because Soros couldn't, couldn't and doesn't in his funds do that kind of performance, how well have these done? Well, over the last 10 odd years, the total return has been 351%, whereas the FTSE has only been up 56%. Or it's an equivalent of 16% per annum, whereas the FTSE has only been up 4%. Some great comments, by the way, by CEO of Barclays and of JP Morgan about how great this performance is, about how great this performance is, so how did we pick the stocks? What were the strategies? And how did we outperform Soros? How can you do it? How can you make money uh, as well? Well, the reason I say making Soros blush again is because also it beat not just him. Every single UK fund manager. Look, UK all companies. So if you're investing in all companies that we were, over the last 10 years, the next best one was some chap called Lee Hemsworth, who was up 253%. Like I said to you, I was up 351%, uh, uh, way above, way above. And uh, never mind Soros, what about Warren Buffett? Over the same period, Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway was only up over 10 years 89%. Like I said, I was up 351 So we want to know, how do you do that? How can you do that? By the way, APSI stands for Alpish Patel Special Edition. That's just my special edition of ShareScope, and that's on which I gave these stock ideas. 
So which ones do I like at the moment? Which ones do I like? Well, these are the ones which are using the exact same principles, which for the last 10 years were used every single year to find 10-month picks, sorry, 12-month picks for the last 10 years. These were, these were um, the, the same names uh, that I came up with just recently. They're based on, so what are the criteria which generate a 34% return per annum? Uh, and then we'll talk shorter term trading later. This is just a 12 month buy and hold. Criteria were we looked at the valuation of the companies. We look at the growth prospects based on their profit growth, their revenue growth, and how well they've done in the recent past. We look at the dividends they're producing. We look at uh, those three main factors value, growth, and income. And then we score them by weighing the individual criteria. So it's all quite complicated algorithms. But anyway, the names which came out, if you've got a pen and paper, you want to look at these. These are the ones that we liked based on that same criteria which generated 34% last year. Uh, these are the ones we like for a 12-month holding period, not from January of this year, but from this past week. I looked at these just this past week. I ran the algorithm again for 12 months from today because the way it works is whenever you run the algorithm, it gives you the stocks for the next 12 months, which based on those criteria of valuation on growth, on dividend yields, are going to perform the best. Okay, uh, and what we've done is how do we find those criteria? Why do we think valuation, growth, and income, and what are the specific things we look for? Well, we did. We went through lots of academic research, lots of our own experiences, and we worked out for valuation that we really should be looking at PE ratios and price earnings growth ratios. For growth, we should be looking at revenue year-on-year -year growth, earnings year-on-year -year growth, uh, uh, and not necessarily other revenue measures, not other growth measures, not other uh, measures of earnings. Uh, we found actually the things we need to look at in order to be incredibly accurate and get those kind of figures that you just saw, which as I said, make Sor Soros blood, uh, blush because they outperform him and Warren Buffett for that matter, they outperform him, were these. Okay, so the next issue is, right, okay, Albus, you've got the criteria, you've got the names you've given us, you've shown us the track record and it's independently verified. Uh, what else do you like and how do we adopt these strategies and tactics ourselves, which is what I want to talk about because it's about making you money as well. That's the whole point of it. Okay, so let's kick off with some of the American names using the same criteria, value, growth, and income. Let's use, look at some of the others. Okay, these are the names. If you've got a pen and paper, uh, you want to write these down. These are the top 10 names which came up with the best valuations, uh, growth criteria uh, for the next 12 months, okay? Uh, BGC, Hawaiian, Kestor, uh, or actually if you've got a cell phone, just take a picture of the screen. There'll also be a repeat of this recording as well, um, so don't worry. But most people, if they've got a cell phone, just pull it out and take a picture of the screen. That's usually a clever way of uh, doing these things in a hurry, okay? Um, somebody's rightly said, why do most of them begin with A? Uh, in an odd way, they don't actually. I mean, you've got BGC and Hawaiian and Kestrel, and I wondered that at first. I wondered if there's some kind of alphabetization uh, going on. The way it works is this. Uh, for each scoring criteria, so let's say all the nines will be alphabetic, alphabetized, uh, and then you start with the eights. They're all alphabetized. So it's the top ten, it's the first ten that come up, but don't forget all the eights uh, in alphabetical order. So I treat all the eights the same. So it doesn't matter if, for instance, Microsoft is an eight. Well, you know, it's still an eight. An eight's an eight and eight. It's just that they then rank in alphabetical order once they're an eight. Okay. Where are we going on currencies? Let me come to currencies before we talk actual strategies. Actual strategies uh, that we're using at the short term end. Long term end, I've just described. Uh, strategies for you for valuation, growth, and income, and where we think the market's going. Let's look at the short-term end. And before we do that, let's look at some currencies. Uh, this is what we're certainly seeing for sterling dollar, for cable. We're seeing a weakening of the dollar. Uh, we're already at 1.7. Book your trip to New York, I think, uh, because uh, at this rate, we see that upward trend intact, uh, and we've seen a dollar weakness, the lowest it's been in about four and a half years. Four and a half year low for the dollar, has anybody noticed? Well, that's partly a function of quantitative easing. It's a function of other things as well, like their budget deficits and so on. Uh, but four and a half year low, 
okay uh, euro dollar uh, what we got there similar kind of story I put it in this way uh, 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 you've got dollars per euro again it is at a couple of year low there and it looks like it's going to continue so on this we're expecting further dollar weakness as well what about dollar versus yen well uh, for those who are currency traders and I said I'll get to strategies in just a second but this is for the currency traders amongst you uh, we've got a bit of a base we've got uh, a pullback of the uh, of the yen in other words we've got some strengthening remember the yen the idea with the Japanese government was to weaken the yen was to weaken the yen uh, but in actual fact what we're now starting to see is something of a pullback uh, there and we expect that to continue I uh, expect it to break below 100 uh, and, and get to about uh, we're going to say about 96 so that's a good little trade there by the way if you wanted ABN AMRO's uh, targets for those major currencies uh, you can see that oh, we've got some disagreement uh, they think contrary to me that cable will come back a bit uh, and probably won't break 1.7 uh, for very long uh, but what do they know they're just a major international bank uh, so these are the figures again you might want to take a picture of these if you are a trader in these if you're trading in these what relevance are the year end targets to you because obviously on a day to day basis they don't actually make much of a difference do they they don't make much of a difference uh, to, to think oh well by the year end it's going to do this well the reason is when we're trading we tend to have a bias so we'll have a bias uh, that in the broader trend in the in the overall direction because you don't want to be fighting the overall direction the overall forces of nature as it were so we tend to push in one direction in our trades it's always good to know the broader perspective the longer term perspective that's vitally important now let's talk strategies let's talk strategies so you don't ever end up like this because this is what happens to most traders with most traders they're high on caffeine and they're watching TV they're online with their broker and they're freaking out what I did when I set up my hedge fund uh, was have a very systematic approach actually I had a systematic approach well before then I'm actually speaking to you from my office at the moment um, here in London in Mayfair uh, and I yes I know I'm a workaholic uh, uh, but uh, it's very easy doing webinars when you're in the office because you just put on the headset and you're good to go uh, and besides which the US markets are still open so I've got a number of screens open if you hear me uh, tap away that means that there's some order that's been placed somewhere or something that I've just got to authorize at some point now uh, let's look at this what happens to most traders is this so how do we avoid it how do we stop doing that well I'll tell you how we do it we have tactics and strategies which uh, will outperform uh, George Soros and the like uh, so let's give you some more of those by the way in case you're wondering why should we trust you with this Arpish that's the Financial Times that's a copy of their FT money and business that's them calling me a top FTSE 100 forecaster and it's those techniques I'm going to talk to you about uh, now I'm also going to talk to you uh, about when I before I talk about some of these strategies about how to use these strategies the broker we've been using we've been using intertrade I'm going to show you how to get five thousand pounds out of them uh, you will all have seen because there's a lot of it that goes on a lot of brokers are offering um, cash top-ups to accounts now a lot of people say to me they say well okay Alpesh um, but you know they've always I can't just open an account they give me five thousand pounds well no of course not so I'm going to talk you through the terms uh, of the deal that we've got in association with them uh, because it'll explain a lot of what's happening more broadly in the market uh, uh, with other brokers anyway okay how do you get five thousand pounds from intertrader and by the way who's intertrader you'll see my adverts on CNBC and on Bloomberg first things first intertrader are owned by B win B win are those people they're the ones who are the shirt sponsors for Real Madrid and also uh, some of the uh, German and Italian teams. Huge, huge company. Okay, so we partnered with them uh, and we worked out a way to give clients £5,000. I'll talk you that in a second. Uh, obviously, you've got to be over 18. Uh, you've got to understand with spread betting, you can lose more money than your initial stake and deposit. And I'm going to give you some tactics of how to get that £5,000 off them as an account bonus, but also how to make trading profits, more importantly, uh, in a second, those those um, trading strategies. Okay. 
uh, and this is not obviously for Americans or Turkish people, uh, for I don't know why the Turk, what the Turks have got against trading, but anyway, there you go. Uh, so we partnered with B Win. Uh, there you go, me and Ronaldo. With, he's passing the ball to me there in that picture. I'm just out of shot. Uh, investingbetter.com forward slash B Win. Uh, so how do you get five thousand pounds? By the way, we wanted to make sure we picked uh, a broker which has won lots of things, lots of awards. Uh, uh, and if you go on that uh, link, uh, investingbetter.com forward slash B Win you'll see how to open an account and get that 5k so given that a lot of these brokers did what are the terms and conditions they all seem to have so you can understand that okay look first deposit over 500 pounds is increased by up to 10 percent to a maximum of five thousand pounds okay fine i can see how they're going to get me up to 5k that i'm going to get i've got to put a deposit in and they're going to keep increasing it uh, by 10 percent fine but wait a minute how do I withdraw that money? Uh, withdraw your bonus by placing trades with a total stake of at least double the bonus amount. So let's say the bonus amount was £5,000. You'd have to do trades with total cumulative stakes of uh, £10,000. Now, a lot of brokers have similar offers. Okay, well, if we've got to do £10,000 worth of trades, now this is important. Okay, £10,000 of stakes, new clients only. Uh, excludes equity trading obviously because obviously you could just sell by ten thousand pounds worth of ten thousand pound stake in Vodafone or whatever they're talking about FX here and indices and gold that's all fine okay um, but why is this relevant to us well there's a couple of reasons one is you all know Soros is an active trader we trade actively so you need active trading strategies in order to make money if you've got to spend £10,000 worth of trades in order to get that 5k back, okay, you're going to need active trading strategies. Okay, because if you're going to do, a, say, a £100 bet or a £200 bet, you have to do a lot of them to get to 10k. You might think, well, what a con, you've got to do so many of them. Well, actually, no, because 10k worth of trades is actually not a lot for most. They can probably do it in about a month for most typical traders if they're trading actively. But then you might say, oh, so I want to trade actively. This is why I mentioned things like these broker things, because what they're actually doing is compensating you for any losses you might suffer by giving you that extra uh, uh, deposit bonus, giving you free money. And we want our hands on free money. We don't want to be trading actively with trading strategies if we're not just making money from the trading strategies themselves. But let's see if we can make it from the brokers and get some cash out of them as well. So what we're going to do, you go to investingbetter.com forward slash bwin, open your account through there. What we're also going to do, Let's give you a free copy of my book, How to Win at Spread Betting. Why is that a really good thing to have? We're going to give you a free copy of that. Uh, an analysis of why some people win and some lose and how you can be a winner in spread betting. Well, the reason is this, and these are the questions that people always want answered. After I do this, I'm going to go through some of the strategies that active traders use, day traders use, to make money. If we use those active traders strategies, okay, and we've got a chance of not just making money from the strategy, but by opening that account, also making money from the broker. I want to make the broker as well. Um, is that link applicable to people in Canada? Yes, it is. I've got an, uh, an email there. Um, somebody from Alberta, I think. That's wonderful. That's great. It's uh, noontime your time, I think, roughly. Um, okay, so these are the kind of questions that we're going to give you a free copy of if you open that account. Uh, which clients win and lose? Because what we did is we analyzed uh, about 10 years worth of data from various brokers at the back end to see who of their clients were making money and who weren't. Okay, so it's um, which clients win and lose and their characteristics. Which markets are the easiest to make money on? Is it FX? Is it gold? Which markets should retail investors avoid? Which ones do all their fellow investors lose money on? So why would they obviously want to avoid them then? Do investors make more money in volatile markets or in quiet markets? Uh, which is the more profitable, to go long or to go short? When we analyze 10 years worth of data, were people making money by going long or by going short? Because if we find that 90% of people made money by going long, we want to say, well, you know what, I'm going to just go long then. Do short-term or day traders make more money than long-term traders uh, on the data we analyzed? Uh, what are the most common mistakes made by losing clients? How much do the top spread betters actually make? Which trading systems work best? 
do technical analysts outperform fundamental analysts? So we looked through that data and we said, right, let's find out which of these clients are technical analysts, which are fundamental analysts. How long are the most profitable positions held? So if you know that after holding a position for longer than a certain amount of time, it's no longer profitable, then you know that actually, you know what, we don't want to be holding certain positions for too long. Uh, uh, what impact do dealing costs have on the ability to beat the market? Well, guess what? There will be dealing, uh, uh, there will be uh, dealing costs. But if you can get five thousand pounds off your broker, that's going to help a lot, isn't it? What rules do profitable traders use for setting trading size and stop losses, uh, uh, as well? And I'm going to come to that in a second as a trading tactic in just a moment. Uh, what do winners do differently from losers? Uh, we broke down what the winning characteristics were and what the losing characteristics were of traders. How many spread betters win and how many lose? Do losers become winners and winners become losers over time? And do winners mimic what famous traders like George Soros do or not? What was it? That's all in that book. Free copy when you open your account with investingbetter.com forward slash bwin, the brokerage account, the spread betting account, which gives you uh, up to £5,000 as well. The last thing you want to know about that before I move on to the strategy uh, that you can use with that account so that you're trading enough, you're trading enough to make that kind of money uh, just from the broker itself. So you're actively trading, day trading type of strategies. Before I move on to that, is your money safe? Yes. So BWIN, so Intertrader, owned by BWIN, is run on a technology platform by London Capital Group. LCG is FC authorized. And any funds you deposit or make, are held in segregated client money accounts in accordance with the FCA's client money rules. Uh, and worst case scenario, we all turn up at Ronaldo's home and say, hey. Uh, but more importantly, so what strategies? What are the active strategies that we've been teaching uh, investing better to some of our students who trade actively and then open the brokerage accounts, make profits on the trading strategy itself, but also make profits as I've just shown you, by making those deposits with the broker, okay, and making a bit extra on the side there by the broker giving them money, because that's a bonus. That is a bonus. Uh, uh, so one of the strategies, mean reversion. I'm going to talk about this and how you can do it, okay? A lot of the time, prices move around a value area. Whenever they move above or below that too much, they spring back. Prices spring back. Okay, they're a bit like a spring. They either overextend or they underextend. On average, they're relaxed. Okay, they're in the middle somewhere. Or let me put it this way: they move in waves. They overreach to an extreme, then they go too low, so they go up, up, buddy, up, and then down uh, and up and so on. So you can see a trading strategy developing: buy at the troughs, sell at the peaks. Mean reversion. Mean reversion around an average price. Great thing with this strategy, you can do it on a three or a five minute chart. You sit in front of the chart, you pull it out, you look over the recent past, just like this, and you say, right, you know what, it's oscillating around an average area. I'm going to go long at the bottom, I'm going to exit and go short at the peaks. And you bang, 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 tap that away. We've got one student who got 10K from the broker um, because of the accounts they opened and were trading uh, like crazy uh, just to, well, make the profits, but also to get the funds out of the brokers as well. Um, so price moves in waves. It reaches an extreme overshoot. You look for that pattern on a three to five minute chart. Why a three to five minute chart? Why not a one year chart? Well, a one year chart, you're probably going to do one trade. You're not really going to make much money, are you? So we're looking at the active end of trading. How does that make Soros blush. Well, guess what? When Soros used to do this and broke the Bank of England, you couldn't. You didn't have online trading. You didn't have any of those things back in 1990. Uh, what we have now is the ability for private investors, the likes of you and me, to trade actively, proactively. Uh, and you know what else would make uh, people like him blush? They got their money tax-free. Guess what? So do we. Spread betting, it's tax-free as well. Of course, you don't have to do it through a spread betting. Uh, you could do it through CFDs and so on. Uh, through the same link, investingbetter.com forward slash B win. What else? What else? Well, just in case you're wondering with the strategies that I'm going to go through and show you some of the results with just the pullback side of it, um, just in case you're wondering 
uh, okay, who's this guy? How, does he really know what he's talking about? These are the comments uh, about my trading um, based on my books. Uh, and you can see there, uh, people like the chairman of the Chicago Board of Trade gets to the heart of, my, my heart of the matter of trading by clearly elucidating the methodologies of successful trading strategies. And we've got people um, like Bernard Opity, founder of uh, $2 billion hedge fund. As a trader and financial journalist himself, Arpish is uniquely qualified to give you a behind-the-scenes view of financial markets and the interaction with the media. Uh, but gives very uh, intelligent view of the art of investing. So these are comments from the books that I've written and the content on what I'm showing you now. So I can tell you for sure this was very important material, vital, uh, 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 vital value um, by my peers. So then what we did, we said, well, okay, we've got a whole load of these trading strategies. I'm going to show you some of the stuff uh, in just one second, more stuff. Um, what do we do? Where do we take it from there? So we created, because a lot of people said, I don't want to be sitting there and just uh, analyzing it myself. I want you, to, uh, you guys to feed it into me. So we created a newsletter, which every day for foreign exchange and for equities, uh, and you can look at it on the investingbetter.com website. Uh, it gives you morning briefs, important events, economic calendar, technical analysis, entry stops and limits. Entry stops and limits. Also for top UK stocks. Entry stops and limits. When it does that, what does it mean? Well, these are some of the returns that it's generated. These are actually taken from our newsletter, daily newsletter on investingbetter.com uh, that we've produced. 45 pips uh, at, uh, were get gained at £30 per pip, £1,350. Uh, uh, that's over the space of a few hours, okay? So in euro dollar or sterling dollar, 1,500 pounds from 50 pips at 30 pounds a pip. These we put in the newsletter, you see them, you follow through uh, uh, on the trades or it confirms your own pre-existing views. We also cover things like gold, okay? It's 4,800 pound profit. You can see the entry that we put in. Uh, uh, you can see the exit uh, there, and you can see the gain that was made. These were actually given and stated in the newsletter. You see the entry and the exit. See the price drop. You see the gain, £1,350, 45 pips at £30 uh, per pip. Okay, so we knew that the strategies we had we were giving specific entries, specific exits, and that made a lot of people very interested, very excited all of a sudden, okay, uh, 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 3,300 pounds profit over the space of uh, a week or so, entry and exit levels very clearly marked, it's what we started doing in the newsletters, we thought, you know what, we should adapt all this knowledge and just give it to people each day in the form of the newsletters, you've got to invest in better and you'll see it, sterling dollar, similar kind of story, 1,200 pounds, 40 pips, 30 pounds a pip, okay, well those are the end results, so what are some of the strategies that we used. I've told you one with the pullback. We used that on a three to five minute chart. We're literally looking at that chart, to, waiting for patterns to develop as in waves, uh, and then as soon as it moves too far away or too far below, we're expecting that pullback to happen, and bang, we're in there. Uh, and we're trading that pretty actively uh, just by eye, just by looking at the pullback for that reason. Uh, the time frame on these charts is all shown on them. Uh, you can see it on the bottom, uh, and it varies uh, by trade opportunity. So you can see here, which is 20th of May, uh, uh, and you can see the entry and the exit in sterling dollar. Okay, you can see the time frame at the bottom of the chart. Yeah. Um, so let me go into the strategic parts again. One of the things that we do, which in a way, mimic Soros, and private investors can do this now, but very often they don't know, uh, and people like Soros used to just be the only ones. The hedge fund managers is who I mean when I say people like Soros. Uh, and having set up a hedge fund 10 years ago myself, uh, uh, I can tell you the way it works is that we know stuff that many others don't, uh, and we don't bother telling them. So one of the things that we know is hedge fund managers, virtually every professional hedge fund manager does this is we position the size of our trades like a professional. What do I mean? Okay, let me show you. Imagine the entry point is somewhere up here where I've uh, where the blue line starts or where the green arrow is. Imagine that's your entry point. Okay? 
whenever we move out our stop loss, whether it's at what I've called 2 ATR or we move it to, let's say, 3 ATR, we, if we move it further away, we reduce our position size. In other words, we reduce the stake per point. So if we're going to move it further away, we don't lose more money because it's a further out stop. You change the position size so that you would lose the same money whether it went closer or further out. That might beg the question then, and this is, by the way, a huge professional insight for private investors. Private investors just don't know this tiny, tiny little thing which every single hedge fund manager in the world, professional worth is salt. All those hedge fund managers said wonderful things about me and the strategies that I adopt and provide that you saw, uh, they all know it. Uh, so the question then arises, if you reduce your uh, position size, the bet, the amount of money you stake by every time you move the stop loss out, why do you move the stop loss out? Uh, is the first question, or why don't you just keep it further out? Yeah, that's what you're asking. The reason is, if you reduce your position size, then obviously if the if the stop loss doesn't get hit and the price just rises and goes in your favor, you've got a smaller position size, so you're going to make less profit. That's why you don't just pick a further out stop loss. Then you might say, well, why reduce the stop loss to begin with? Uh, sorry, why reduce the uh, position size to begin with? if you move the stop further out? Well, because if you don't, then you could lose more money if the stop gets hit. See the balance? You see how we did that? Then the next question arises, well, why do you move it further out anyway? You move it further out if the markets are particularly volatile. So you don't get, as what some of you know, you don't get whipsawed. Why do you have a stop loss? You always have a stop loss. It's always good to have a stop loss because it preserves your capital. It makes sure that you can move on to the next trade. It means you can uh, uh, not just hold and tie up valuable capital, which isn't earning a profit. So you have a stop loss. See how I've answered every single important question of stop losses that you would ever possibly have, which is, where do you place it? You place it so far out that it won't just get hit by normal price volatility. Uh, if you want to put it even further out because volatility has suddenly increased and the markets are moving around more, you reduce your position size. But you don't just always keep it far away because your reduced position size would mean you can't profit or when you're right as much. And also, you don't um, keep it too close because it might whipsaw you out. That's a professional way of doing it. That is a trading tactic which would make Soros blush because you wouldn't expect private investors to know that level of detail. Why do I know it? I run a hedge fund. Your private investors, there's nothing stopping you from adopting exactly the same techniques and strategies. Do they work? Hell yes. This is from my book published by the Financial Times. Okay. Um, this is a quote by the chairman of the Chicago Board of Trade, the world's largest exchange. Gets to the heart of the matter of trading by clearly elucidating the methodologies of successful trading strategies while capturing the ineffable ethos of singular successful traders. Bloody hell, that's a mouthful. But the point of it is, wow, this guy knows what he's talking about. That's my book. Um, I'm not asking you to get the book. What I'm suggesting to you uh, is, as you can see here, is listen to some of the tactics that we know. Uh, 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 somebody said if the markets are very volatile, it's better not to trade absolutely. You could put the stop loss very far away or you decide not to trade. But sometimes the reason you want to trade in volatile markets is if things move quickly, your profits come quicker. Because if something's moving very quickly in one direction, your profits come quicker. You're still whipsawing, remember, you're still going to go uh, uh, and trade the markets going upwards and downwards and find that cycle. Find that cycle where it's overextended and underextending around an average price. Got it? What's the other thing we do? We run our profits. Remember when Soros broke the Bank of England, for those of you who know your economic history, uh, and he just bet on uh, sterling falling, uh, that it would fall out of the ERM and then would drop? Uh, well, he added to that position. He kept on adding to it. So the issue is, when you are right, you have to add to your position and let those profits run. Guess what every single private investor does? And this is what every fund manager like Soros knows. Guess what every private investor does? They add to their losing positions because they don't want a loss. So they think, oh, if I add to my losing position, it will turn around. I'll average down my losing uh, break-even point. Guess what? Um, 
all those professions you see on screen, they don't add to their losing positions. They never add to their losing positions. <laughs> if it's at a loss, why the hell do you want to add to it? Okay, what they do, and professional hedge fund managers like myself and every other professional hedge fund manager does is they add to their winning positions, never to their losing ones. Okay, don't like the, what I'm telling you because you're a private investor. It's ingrained into you. No, no, I must add to my losing positions. Uh, well, I can only tell you what we professionals do. and You've got to take it or leave it, but you've got to trust me on this one. Uh, we decide to buy more. Uh, in the middle of a winning trade. How do you decide? Well, in some extent, it's an art. You see the position moving go in your favor, okay? You add to it when you see price momentum. You see it moving quicker. You, when you take off those additional positions you've added on, as soon as they look like they're going to turn into a loss, okay? You don't want to sit on a fat loss. So if you added a second, third, fourth, fifth position, so let's say you started at 10 pounds a point, you just added an extra two pounds, an extra two pounds, an extra two pounds. Those additional two pounds, None of them should be turning into losses. They should just be accumulating. As soon as they look like they might not um, keep as much profit in, you can start wiping off, closing your additional positions. That's how a trader does it. That's how you get to those additional trades you need to make anyway to get the money out of the brokers, but how you get those additional profits as a trader. So in that case, you might say, well, wait a minute, Alpish, why do I need to add to winners? Why can't I just keep my initial stake? And that's that. The reason is this. Trading is about playing the numbers. Okay, it's a bit like a hand at poker. You got to keep on. Uh, uh, you got to keep on dealing the cards. When you get a great hand, that's when you go all in. Until then, you keep folding. You just take a little win or a little loss, and that's fine. A little nibble here or there. You don't know what's going to be winning. Of course, I'd like to say to you, oh, you don't need to add to winners. Everything's a winner because you're only going to trade winning trades. Guess what? Life isn't like that. We don't just have winning trades. Uh, we have losing trades. We have small losing trades. We have uh, uh, small winning trades. Uh, we don't know what they're going to be before they happen. The difference between a winner and a trader is a, uh, a winner and a loser. Uh, as a trader, is that the winner will add to winning positions. He won't know which ones they are. He'll have placed his stake in the game, which is his original stake. Once it's there, okay, once it's there, then that is it. He adds to the position, adds to the position, and is making more out of it because he's just got onto the back of a whale. It's a bit like fishing. You keep on throwing the line in. Each time you get a little tiddler, you get a little tiddler. Uh, some months are just wasted, and then occasionally, bang, you get a big one. And that's what trading's like. When you get the big one, you reel it in. You use both hands. You tie. You sit back. You pull it in. Okay. And that's how it is. And trading equivalent, it is when, when it's going with you, you just go all in. And let me show you what I mean when we've done this. Well, we specify in our newsletter the entries and the exits. For instance, here in GBP Sterling, the profit here was 50 pips times 30 pounds a pip. That's 1,500 pounds. Okay. But we're not just talking about entry and exit. That's if you don't add to those winning positions. When it's going in your favor, and by going in your favor, look at it. You've entered short, it's gone, and it's moved really quickly downwards. Bang, bosh, bosh, bosh. You add your additional positions as it's falling, and you take them off as soon as you get a little bit worried that maybe this will turn around. So that's how you do it. So it's not just 1,500. You should be adding at least another 50% to your profit from just entry and exit. That should be maybe 2,250. Uh, somebody asked about time frames. Well, that was from entry on the 27th of May. So, you know, look, we're talking about a few days ago and for those who get our newsletter. Um, uh, and you're talking about one and a half days there. And that's when it delivered it, one and a quarter days. Um, so not bad for one and a quarter days uh, to get those kind of results. FTSE 100 as well. We do the indices. You got the entry. You got the exit. In between there, from the entry point, and the exit in between, of course, what you're doing as soon as it spikes up, what you're doing is, 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 is adding positions because you see the speed of the move. The speed of the move is, uh, as each one of these bars represents, uh, uh, let's say, one hour. Uh, it, it, in one hour, if it moves up that much, it's obviously a fast move compared to if it just stays still, then it's not a move at all. Okay, FTSE 100 again. Uh, we had the entry. Yeah, and then we've got the exit, looking good. 
uh, and don't forget the time frame uh, uh, is one hour. I mean, the, the, every day you get this, okay? Every morning you get this. So the time frame for everything is intraday. Since the report is sent every morning, the charts are all in one hour mode. So every single one of these bars represents an hour, and you get this on your desk every morning. So you know when to enter, when to exit. That was one thousand six hundred fifty pounds, fifty-five points times thirty pounds a point. Obviously, not every trade is going to be profitable. Not every trade is going to be great. Uh, these are just some of the recent ones uh, that we've had. We wanted to show you but using the same principles that professional fund managers uh, have uh, to to pick. That was six thousand pounds in almost a week. Profit here in gold was uh, 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 you can see there um, two thousand. Uh, uh, three pounds a point, uh, six thousand pounds. Uh, okay. Uh, when it comes to losing trades, you've seen it. Well, how do we how do we protect against losing trades? Okay. Remember the bet size. I said the position size is that should it hit your stop loss, you reduce your position size. How much should you lose if it hits your stop loss ever? You shouldn't lose more than two percent of your overall capital. Okay. More than two percent. So. How much do you lose on a losing trade? 2% of your capital, only 2%. Guess what professional traders do? 2%. Some do as little as 1% is all they will lose if it hits their stop loss. Guess what retail investors do? They lose about 10% of their money if it does. 10% of their money, okay? Um, uh, so 200 US cents times three pounds equals 6,000 pounds, okay? GBP US dollar profit here is 50 pips times 30 pounds a pip 1,500 pounds remember you get the newsletter in the morning it gives you all the entries uh, of what we're expecting to happen and the exits you've got specific entries specific exits um, to, to trade off the back of it trade right off the back of it FTSE 100 again recent entry here uh, and an exit point that we'd set now remember as I said Sometimes during this, you're going to add a lot of positions uh, in between. You're going to add to your trade. Uh, and at other times, you might exit only partially along the way. Uh, so those figures are only if you got in and out at the exact moments. You would probably add more to your winning trades, as I explained. Okay, What is the percentage of winning to losing trades? Well, let me explain that to you. Uh, anything less than 50-50, and I might as well be a coin. Yeah, so you'd expect me to be better than 50-50. Uh, would you expect us to be 100% right? Yeah, no, because God would do that. Guess what? Anybody's ever going to be able to do? They're going to be right about seven times out of ten, roughly. Maybe eight times out of ten. Okay, because nine times out of ten is too much like God. Uh, nine times out of ten is just going to be nuts. Okay, so entry is going to be. Uh, sorry, profits and the number of times you're right is going to be about seven to eight times out of ten. That's not the difficult part. Getting it right and being able to manage the downside through what I've just told you is the strategy and tactic of stop losses, which are based upon what I've just said. Um, one of the great, great things is that uh, uh, what we found is you get specific entries and exits. You see, when you've got specific entries and exits and stops which hardly ever get hit, as in our case, then you know that it's not just how often you're right, it's about the money you make. And we make more money when we win than when we lose. What you're really asking is how much money do you make, not how often are you right or wrong, because how often are you right or wrong? What if every time I'm right, we only make a pound, and every time we're wrong, we lose 10 pounds? then it's not going to help that I'm right nine times out of ten, is it? Because I'm going to make nine pounds and lose ten pounds. I'll be down, I'll be loss making. No, we make a lot more money when we're right than we ever lose when we're wrong. Because when we're wrong, we lose very little because of the stops. And when we're right, we plow into those winning trades. That's the big answer. That's, what, that's why retail investors never ask the right question, which is how often are you right? No, it's how much money are you making? What's the percentage returns you're making on your capital? Uh, 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 and let me put it one way, you don't have an asset management company um, whose clients include 
egg on an accident unless you're profitable and know how to make money. Okay, so what are the testimonials for the newsletter? Uh, I can only say thank you so much for the insight it has given me the confidence to start trading. I'm going to give you some more strategies in a second, by the way, uh, and above all, sleep at night. Thank you for making your analysis so simple and clear. Above all, profits speak for themselves. Many thanks for the newsletter. It's given great insight. Uh, the way you explain uh, what is happening globally to affect the markets helps me tremendously. I do like this very much, a uh, more relaxed way of trading because you get the answers. These are some of the clients, paying clients, past and present, uh, of my analysis. Uh, uh, everybody from Merrill Lynch, HSBC, uh, Bloomberg TV, uh, downwards. These, every single one of these are fee paying. This is not just as seen on or somebody who happened to appear on TV once. Any idiot can do that. Uh, these people pay. Uh, as clients. Okay, so uh, uh, what next? Okay, here, look, some of the shorts. So what we do, and this point about how often are we right or wrong uh, is this, okay? The, 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 how often are we right or wrong is this. When you're right, okay, you add to the position, okay, and you let that profit run. So what's happening? You're making far more than when you're wrong because you get a stop loss, you're only losing 2% of your capital, and you are out of there. You are out of there. On the whole, when we're targeting trades and our expected rewards, we're expecting to make double what we might lose if we're wrong. Okay, So we're looking for a 2 to 1 ratio. We don't look, and you'd be a fool to do it. If you're a professional, you never do this. We don't look to, to, to risk a uh, 1,000 pounds in order to make 10 pounds. Okay, we don't look for small wins uh, and be willing to hold on to large losses. Okay, because we're professionals. Uh, again, something which would make Soros uh, maybe blush because he's discovered that private investors and not just the professionals like him know it is your reward is always geared towards being greater than the risk you have on the stop loss. When you place a stop loss at a level which you don't think will be hit, you've got to make sure is there a realistic likelihood that whatever I could lose let's say 20 pips, if the stop loss is hit, I can make 40 pips at least, uh, is that realistic on the upside? That's what we're looking for. We put all that analysis in every single morning into every single uh, one of these charts. What's the reward risk? Where's the stop loss? Where's the likely profit to be? Uh, all of those facts and which is the direction of the trade, all of that goes in every single morning. Uh, in order to get those strategies and get those kind of returns. This was th £2,300, uh, sorry, £2,700 in uh, less than three days, 90 points, £30 a point. Uh, and again, this was uh, just very recently back in March. Okay, we also explain what's going on in the broader market. Sometimes people say, look, I don't just want to know entry and exit levels, but we also educate. Now, this is really important because we want all our traders to become professional traders like us. We want them maybe even to go off and set up their own hedge funds. The only way they can do that is every day, not just trading, but also understanding what's happening. So we provide that commentary so you understand what we're thinking. So you start thinking like a trader. So you get the mind of a trader. That is vital. That is essential. So what you can see here, again, another trade, and this point that our wins, our successes are always far, far greater than our exit. Why is our reward far greater than our risk? Because even if we did not increase our positions and add to winners, our reward is better than our risk on usually a factor of two to one. But don't forget, we add to our winners. We add to our winners like Soros did, like so many hedge fund managers do. So our reward to risk ratio, again, it's the wrong question in a way because guess what? It's dynamic. It changes, it changes because we add to our winning positions, and that's how we know we're pros, okay? So, what else? Here's Euro Dollar, another recent trade, uh, 120 pips, 30 pounds a pip, 3,600 pounds in two days. Euro Dollar, you got the entry level, you got the exit, uh, and you can see, and we plug those in. We show you exactly what we expect to happen based on all our analysis. Sometimes it's mean reversion that the prices will move back and forth. Like I've already told you, sometimes it's just pure momentum driven, support driven. We go through it, we work out right. Is the reward ratio there? Where's the stop loss we should have? What's the analysis we should do based on the fundamentals, based on based on uh, the technicals? And these are just a few of the trades from the last three months, by the way. These are not all of them by any means. We got two 
newsletter pro forex opportunities I'm going to give you some more thoughts on strategies in a second um, but we also have an equity version where we look at equities because some people just want to trade stocks uh, and a position got at the moment buy on Imperial Tobacco uh, relatively straightforward that it's been profitable so great premier oil similar kind of story it's been profitable can't complain invest tech profitable can't complain still holding on heck yeah made quite a nice jump so we, we cover the large cap stocks stocks of the day fundamentals technicals uh, I said premier all uh, uh, Fenner go short because uh, we also go short uh, and you can see and sometimes you know people just miss some of these trades so we get them ready for you every single day because it's too much analysis for other people to do uh, so we use all of this background which was one as the awards one as the um, uh, beaten Warren Buffett and the like and just put it in every single day because we put in what we adopt ourselves as professional traders sell then you got the exit all very clear uh, as you'd want it every single morning with every single trade okay so how do we go from uh, 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 having these tactics okay let me just give you a bit of a recap okay oh somebody said why don't you show us the stop loss levels on these charts they're all in the newsletter they're all written out in detail on these this is these are the charts um, for the presentation if you had if I pulled up the newsletter you'd see that stop losses are all on there um, so what do we do with this if you go to investingbetter.com you can see that let me wrap it up a second what were the strategies then that make Soros blush first of all position uh, uh, the amount of money you put into a trade is based on where you put the stop loss okay that's a massive insight second thing is reward to risk yes the reward is far greater than the risk but you add to your winners third thing actively trading actively trading because then with brokers like investingbetter.com forward slash bwin you get additional money out of them not just making profits from the trades and we use a mean reversion strategy a lot so we go back and we look at is the trade uh, doing a whipsaw is it going uh, uh, is it going to come back on itself and let me show you uh, exactly what I mean by that again uh, uh, okay that's a vital strategy and then you just keep on going prices move in waves we look to look for those patterns do we see it going pulling back on a very short-term trade and you're going bang 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 in 15 minutes you could have done five or six trades uh, uh, small gains bosh 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 every single time on there uh, so that that allows us to then to then go around to brokers and say listen we want bonuses for clients uh, in this case as I said five thousand pounds uh, I said open an account through that link and you're getting a free copy of the book which answers these amazing questions uh, uh, how much do top spread betters actually make which trading systems work best and we did this through analyzing 10 years worth of data from uh, uh, various brokers and it was millions of trades but with computing power you can actually analyze a lot of that and then ask computers questions like what size accounts do the most profitable traders have and you'd be surprised it's not actually the biggest traders well maybe you're not surprised biggest traders who make the most money how many spread betters win and lose and percentages and so on so that's the webinar I hope that you've enjoyed it uh, and I uh, hope you've uh, uh, really enjoyed the the tactical part of it, uh, which was, which was exactly how much to uh, place on the trades. Don't lose more than two percent of your capital uh, to the stop loss level. Where specifically do those stop losses go? They go at a distance where it's not going to get hit by just market volatility. Some of us, uh, and myself included, use indicators like the um, average true range average true range ATR and we look at two times that so we make sure it doesn't uh, just do that uh, uh, and uh, also in terms of adding to those winning positions add to winning trades how do we know when to enter when somebody's going to go into our position we're looking for this pattern we're looking for this pattern okay um, we are looking for this pattern uh, and we're trading actively around it uh, we're looking for price to mean revert away from away from 
the average it's trading for that short space of time. That is getting in and out, in and out. I'm going to do further webinars where I'm going to talk specifically about momentum strategies using the MACD to determine an entry and an exit, where I'm going to use uh, 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 where I'm going to talk in more detail about mean reversion so that you know exactly how far away from the average rather than just determining it based upon uh, observation but actually using technical indicators to say okay when it moves a certain, uh, 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 a certain amount away from the average that's when we pull back and so on and we're going to give some live seminars a whole live day of seminar trading where we'll talk people through actual trading profits so that you get these entries and exits. As I said, you've got broker accounts that you need. Investingbetter.com forward slash B win for that. Claim your five thousand pounds and then look at the entries and exits based on how we do it on investingbetter.com. Learn from that. There's free trial sign ups to all of that as well. Uh, 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 so that you too get to see exactly how how we are generating those returns. Okay. Uh, and when we talk about mean reversion, somebody said, "What if the price doesn't move horizontally?" Um, yeah. Okay. Um, doesn't take a genius to work out then what you do is you're just still looking at a reversion around a rising average price okay so it's just imagine that picture at a slight incline it's still rotating around a certain level around a certain level okay hope you've enjoyed it hope you've enjoyed the webinar we're going to give more uh, insightful detailed webinars coming up as well you just go to investingbetter.com and you'll see all the details uh, of how to sign up uh, on the, for the newsletter right there on the home page uh, of there uh, as well. Uh, as I said, future webinars, what we're going to cover is things like the MACD the, uh, the, uh, uh, and specific uh, amounts by which you'd expect it to move around the average. As I said, myself will often do it because you're trading on a, on a one to three minute. You're not going to be having a calculator out. What you often do is you will work out uh, the extension usually by the price moving uh, a certain amount from uh, technical indicators like the ATR and if it's moving two times the average true range uh, and I'll cover this in future webinars then we're looking to exit as soon as it does that or sometimes we'll use Bollinger Bands look at volatility levels and say we'll get out there but very often it's way too slow to be doing all of that you are doing it by eye you have got to get into using through practicing as trading that feel for it that right it's moved away from its mean now I'm expecting pullback observation follow through follow through those of us who like to have those extra protective wheels of um, uh, uh, technical indicators then what we do is we say right if it goes two times average true range uh, uh, then what we'll do if it's two times the average true range or Bollinger or other indicator is then we'll expect to pull back then we'll expect to pull back. Got it? And that should give you a very, very good idea. Um, so two links I want you to look at, investingbetter.com uh, to get the newsletter details and investingbetter.com uh, forward slash bwin to claim your £5,000 through trading. And I said, if you're going to be actively trading, you need to get that feel and that uh, for, right, I see how it's moving back and forth. We use technical indicators because we don't, quite have that feel we rely upon these other things these other predictors because we say oh god you know what I'm a bit scared just to make the decision based on what I my own analysis tells me so I'm going to rely on the analysis of something uh, else and that's fine there's nothing wrong with that whether it's a newsletter or whether it's looking for price observations like this but what we do when we've got those price observations is we say right either I'm going to do it based on just seeing a pattern even if the average price is rising at an angle even if the average price is gradually just rising upwards then I know then I know that I'll still look around that average for it to move around there so I know I want to short around here and I want to go long now am I going to do that by observation or I'm going to say look I can see this upward trend that's quite clear because it's historic and it's happened every time it moves two times the average true range or or a certain touches the price touches 
the Bollinger Band, I will go short. That's if you need an indicator. If you need that extra sort of wheel support, as it were, uh, uh, then you'd do it that way. Uh, but most of us who are experienced at trading, because it's only uh, one minute charts or five minute charts we're looking at, it's bang, 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 bang. Um, you just do it through experience. Uh, it's a bit like flying a plane, uh, a propeller plane. Um, initially, you need to hold on to everything, and then you just get a gut feel, or driving, actually. You remember, when you once you learn to drive, you start doing it just out of instinct, almost with your eyes closed, <laughs> literally. Um, but with your eyes open, what you're doing here is you're not necessarily using technical indicators too much. You're looking at observation of the patterns. Uh, uh, but if you did want to use the technical indicators, like I said, I'll talk about it more in other webinars. You'll use two times. Average true range is one of the ways in which to do it. Okay, so two links I want you to look at. Investingbetter.com forward slash B win to get that £5,000 and a free copy of our book, investingbetter.com uh, uh, forward slash B win. And, and the other one is investingbetter.com uh, and see what we've done there. Loads of free information and data uh, on, uh, on that website. So hope you will learn to trade off the back of it. Thank you very much indeed.